What I want to talk about now is whether or not this argument, this directed verdict, and we all ask from as defense attorneys, the prosecution puts on its case, and then we jump up and we say, you know what, Judge, no reasonable juror could conclude this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Our client is innocent. There's not a prima facie case established. Send them home. But judges oftentimes deny that. So to discuss this more with me and the effectiveness of Schwartz's argument or the lack of effectiveness thereof, we have <laughs> Dana Swickle, defense attorney extraordinaire. Dana, how are you? I'm wonderful, Joey. How are you? I'm good. So what did you think about the compelling argument, being a little sarcastic, uh, by Schwartz I... <laughs> in this case when the judge said, are we going to go there, Dana? Are we going to go there? What say you? Uh, well, I mean, I couldn't even follow him from the beginning. I, I didn't even understand his correlation. I felt it had absolutely nothing to do with the case. I felt that there were so many other issues that he could have focused on. And he chose to do these two um, analogies to where he was trying to get the court to, to follow him. And the court even looked at him and said, really? Are we really going to go there? And I think that's been the problem with this entire case. Are, are we really going to go there? And I felt that he just did not address the issues. The one issue that I felt that he could have addressed far more was the lack of accounting or a failure in the accounting. And he tried to attack the amount of money and tried to get a lower class felony, but obviously it didn't work. You know, Dana, I'm with you. I mean, focusing on hog roasts and spaghetti <laughs> dinners and donuts, it seemed a little bit misplaced. So, I mean, ultimately, do you think there's any gravity to what he had to say at all? Was it just meritorious or not meritorious? Well, I think if he had focused more in on the actual statute, the amount of money that the state had to prove, if he would have gone far more into the legalities other than these correlations that he was talking about, I think there could have been some merit. I mean, the detective did indicate that there could have been an error in his accounting. I agree with you, Joey. Before we went into the directed verdict, you discussed all these issues that defense counsel Schwartz could have brought up with the detective regarding the doctors. Did he speak to another doctor? Did he get evaluations? Did he d know what her mindset was at the time that he interviewed her and when he received statements from her? I think he should have gone more into the accounting with him. Um, who did the accounting? Why did he make a mistake? And then he could have raised an issue in his directed verdict more so towards the accounting. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from a very unimpressed Criminal defense attorney Dana Swickle. <laughs> Don't go far. We need you. Okay, Dana? You got it, Joey. I'll be here. Thank you. So now we have, she's been nice enough to stick around for us out of Miami, criminal defense attorney Dana Swickle. You know, Dana, it seems pretty compelling to me, so I just want to get your thoughts, I guess, on number one, whether the prosecution has indeed established its case, and then I guess I'll follow that up with saying, what on earth would the defense have to do to meet their burden in insanity. What do you think, Dana? You know, I think that this case probably should have never gone to trial. Um, that's my first thought. I think it was a huge mistake on the defense part to go to trial on a type of case because the evidence is so overwhelming um, in reference to what they've put forward. Each and every witness got on the stand and said they all believed that she was dying from brain cancer and that they would not have donated, done bake sales, gone out of their way had they known she just suffered from seizures. And then you go a step further where Okay, um, if someone else put this rumor out, if someone else said it, she never corrected anybody and never said, that's not true, I don't have that. But by the way, I do suffer from seizures. I've been diagnosed for a very long time with seizures and they affect my ability to function. I, so I think that that was their first mistake in even going to trial. Oh, now, boy. when in, you say first mistake, <laughs> Dane, it sounds like you're queuing up to read through about 20 more. You know, let me just comment on one thing. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I just, and I just want to go back to this with you, Dana. You know, listen, a lot of people misperceive our job as defense attorneys. I view oh. it as we have to protect our clients and mitigate the damage. And when you have a case here where the evidence is so compelling, you can hurt your client by moving forward to trial. So in the event that this was in Miami, Dana, and you were, in fact, a defense attorney, would you have tried to get a plea deal so that you didn't subject your client to this? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of those cases where clearly, clearly there could have been some 
let me put it to you this way, sensitivity towards Ms. Holtzman. Had she not gone to trial possibly, had she apologized, had they tried to, to put forth a sensitivity um, for her, maybe they could have gotten a better deal. I mean, remember, they're in a very small town. And that's another part of the problem. I mean, they should have considered their forum. They should have consider, considered the venue. Um, she's in a very small town and probably caused so many disgruntled people that there would be no way, no way that she'd probably get a fair trial there anyway. But I think we're, you're right. Our job is to represent our client. Our job is not always to fight the fight. Our job is to try to look in the future and do the best that we can do for our clients. And I think they made an error here. You know, on that point, Dana, and you know, obviously they tried to move it they you know the judge was not cooperating with that they wanted to get it out of that venue but even still in the event that you have a case like this I'm with you I think what you do is you go to the prosecutor and you say listen on your issue of sensitivity Dana you say listen my client made a horrific mistake she's a good person yeah. it snowballed out of control can we talk can we keep her out of jail if she has to go to jail could it be minimal at least but I think you know when you don't do that and now you perpetrate what could be perceived as a fraud upon the court I don't think the judge will be so kind in sentencing here, Dana. But shifting to the whole issue of insanity, do you think that could potentially work in this case? Well, I think, honestly, that we haven't seen their case yet. So let, let's, let's start there. I, I think that there is, uh, we'll see more about her defense in reference to when they put on their case. I think it's very difficult when you're cross-examining the state's witness, possibly other than their doctor. Um, and the detective, by the way. I still think you brought up a fabulous point, Joey, where you were saying that the, that the defense counsel should have gone after him a lot more with respect to her medical records. And I think they could have laid the foundation. They could have laid the tracks to say, hey, by the way, I mean, really, think about it, Joey. Who goes this far? as to shaving her eyebrows or even waxing her eyebrows. I mean, there's clearly something wrong with her at this point. Clearly something wrong. And you know why, Dana? I, you know, and I'm sure you do the same thing. What you do in your case, look, the prosecution puts on a case, and with their witnesses, you establish the foundation for your theory, right? Yeah, All the witnesses. Absolutely. You don't know what my client's state of mind was, right? You don't know her hardships. You simply know what she told you. So now you're laying your foundation, and I didn't see that here at all. Did you? No. I, I mean, I did watch several of the state's witnesses, and of course we got to see that recap. And there was nothing. I mean, you know, it, it was, it should have been laying the foundation. I talk about that all the time. Lay the Put foundation. The That's Dana, right. Put you, the seeds out there. You're staying with us. We're grateful to have you. Stick around, Dana, and thank you.